the Tibetan talks a lot about uh, maturation, that humankind is on a big maturation curve, that we've got to get out of the playpen, we have to grow up and take full responsibility for everything that we've manifested here, uh, which is exciting because we're going to have the potential to have uh, a much broader range of experience than we've ever known possible. And yet we have to take responsibility for all of the, the whole situation. So I agree, it's, uh, it is pray to Allah and tie up the camel for sure. And, and my understanding as a therapist is that uh, the, 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 the beginning point of all of this is internal, is uh, as people are clearing out their shadow and, and getting in touch with, with the denied parts of themselves and, and, and all of those unresolved, unilluminated parts, and they start working and healing and taking responsibility, uh, then, then they start to transform, their consciousness shifts, and then they help others do the same. And naturally, out of that comes a breaking down of the old world order, a breaking down of the old structures that were based on limitation and fear. And uh, and then together, as, as one global family, then we start to build the new world order, whatever that's going to look like. Right. But clearly, it'd be new. <laughs> and yeah. I agree, it's a, it feels very... Uh, like we're right on the razor's edge, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> razor's edge is, is a good way to look at it too, or, or a tipping point. Tipping point, Because yes. like if, if we were looking at scales, it's been so off balance for so long yes. that we've been p piling on goodness and positive thinking here and not really seeing anything happen. But now it's starting to tip. Yes. And now we're starting to see the slightest little thing we do is tipping it more and more and more and yes. all we have to do is keep up right now because yes I, I think we're on the verge of something I, the, the Christians call it the awakening of Christ consciousness and every religion talks yes. about this but from usually a patriarchal ego uh, filter yeah. you know but yeah. as it comes out if you if you can just follow it back to what the, the masters said originally and yes. really glean what they meant from those words I think we're all talking about the same thing you know we're talking yes. about a point in time I mean they built pyramids to point at this time yeah Th this is a yes. point in time when we're tipping back towards awakening and yes. uh, I can't think of anything more exciting to, than to be here now that's incredible isn't it oh it's really amazing it's, it's mm -hmm. such an honor and so scary <laughs> it's such an honor and it's so scary and there's so much in between and, uh, and and I agree that we're all the Christ the whole issue of the Christ consciousness which is my understanding is uh, it's the it's the uh, the vehicle of unification of oneness of uh, true communion and uh, learning to trust our hearts and follow our hearts and the Tibetan often indicates we barely, we barely scratch the surface of knowing what it is to love. Uh, I mean, we, we explore love, we share love, and yet it's a, a tiny little piece compared to what we're capable of. Uh, my understanding is with the infusion of the Christ consciousness, uh, I, don't, I don't say that from a religious perspective, I say that simply from a metaphysical perspective, uh, that the, the impact on the collective heart chakra uh, is becoming enormous and is going to become even more enormous uh, so that uh, the sense of communion, community and oneness already will have a tremendous alchemical impact on the terrible division or divisive uh, uh, aspects that have caused so much suffering on the planet. Uh, so anybody so we we're called to look into our hearts to see if there's any blockage in there or fear restriction uh because my understanding is that as this energy comes through the electricity the christ consciousness the wave of love the height frequencies uh the new life factor the release of duality all of these wow things uh it's really going to affect the heart and that we uh we're going to have an opportunity to really experience what love really is. 
that's my understanding. Not that we haven't been loving, uh, it's just that it's been a certain level compared to what we're capable of. Right. Yeah. yeah. Even even listening to you speak right now, I, I, I feel something in my chest area. And Yay. this this hasn't yeah. always been. You know, I, uh, I you know, th I think that's why I like reading a book like yours because it comes across to male energy also, you know. And this is what we need. We oh, we need yeah. to have more men wake up to their feminine aspect to start yeah. dismantling these patriarchal organizations. And then yes. we need more women to come out and start claiming their their power back that's been yes, taken away from them for centuries. Yes. And if we can both do that, all work together, Yes. we're going to give birth to um, a planet, I believe, a, a planetary consciousness. It'd yes. be like the same thing that if, if I was a, a cell inside the heart and you were a cell inside the heart, yes. and we're yes. these individual cells, but we sense that we're part of an organ. And if yes. we can wake up to that organ, mm -hmm. Imagine waking up to the organism of a human being from a cellular point of view. You would have vision and hearing. What what are we going to wake up to when we wake up to a planetary consciousness and eventually even a solar and galactic consciousness? I mean, these are like realms of perception that are so far beyond our cellular, human cellular consciousness now that yes. we can't yes. even imagine it. But I yes. really feel it. I feel yes. something happening in my heart. This is wonderful. So as you describe that, then that makes me feel it more too. And that's how we collectively awaken each other. The Tibetan often says this is not the Aquarian age is not the age of gurus. Not that I that we've had wonderful gurus for the most part. <laughs> wonderful teachers. Uh, it's just that it's not that the age of Pisces, which is what we're leaving, is was more a devotional pathway, uh, or the singular mystic, uh, following the guru, allowing the guru to create a vibrational field that would evolve us. Uh, and now with the, the shift of the ages, uh, uh, it's this uh, people talking to each other, it's this uh, people getting together and sharing their truth, like we are right now and some kind of transmission going on between us uh, and in groups. And that's the mutual awakening process that is not only available to us now, but is divinely mandated. Uh, and so, and what you were saying before about the feminine and the masculine was interesting. Um, my understanding is um, there's a lot of talk about the return of the divine feminine which I, my understanding is that just like you were saying, it's just a balancing out uh, of the masculine and feminine. And my understanding is it's, it's all a resolution of a of the distortions and the duality. And as uh, as the divine feminine, and I see the mystery as the divine feminine. Uh, and that's why if we can bask in that not knowing and feel the divine feminine, then we naturally allow the the power of the divine feminine to come through in equal measure to the divine masculine so it's not a competition and a power struggle it's it's very childish all that stuff yep. the Tibetan says this is if we can imagine ourselves in kindergarten and what would it be like to be receiving our phd i mean there's a huge difference and that's i think the what you're describing the the, that we could actually go from a certain parameters of consciousness and reality and then have such a vast expansion uh, as if one day we're in kindergarten and the next day we're in our PhD program. Uh, it's that vast. Um, so yes, uh, and of course for women it's, it's all the inner male and female energies anyway inside that need to be balanced uh, and, and honored so that that mystical union inside can be uh, part of our willingness to be, have a, a mystical union with the divine feminine and masculine. And then the craziness, uh, the fear, it's all fear. If, if the masculine has been overpowering the feminine, it's just fear. Uh, and all of that's getting, needs to be resolved. We have a lot of work to do, don't we? <laughs> a lot of work. And, and actually, I, I think we're, we're doing it. This is part of it. 
I mean, yes. what, what we're doing right here is yes. an outer manifestation of what's happening spiritually. We're starting to connect. Yes. A and even with the people watching this, the people yes. that are watching this, they're connecting yes. with us. And, yes. and it's a very mysterious thing, but it, it is happening. Yes. So what, what would you like to say in closing? Uh, I, I love what you just said about uh, the transmission of energy with, with people watching. Uh, that uh, 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 that they that to stay open that we need to simply stay open to suspend conclusions to accept that we're in the mystery uh, and to celebrate that this is a birth process and that we've had the honor we have the honor to be here and to be a vital part each one of us a vital part we each hold a very specific key to this, uh, to the new paradigm, uh, and that that we that we now have all the assistance we need to uncover what that key is in each one of us, so that we could step forward and take full responsibility for our participation, and then as the Tibetan just likes to say, to celebrate, to celebrate everything that we don't know that is actually coming into our consciousness at this juncture. So well, that, that sounds like a good place to end this. <laughs> And I, I really appreciate you taking the time for this. Thank you. And thank right. you so much for having me. You're welcome.